everybody welcome back to the channel nice to see you again what advice would i give to my younger self it's a question i've been asked several times recently and i've been kind of thinking about what missed opportunities have there been what mistakes have there been that i could have avoided swerved whatever you want to call it what advice could i impart on someone who was just jumping into this hobby and just getting started. I'm hopeful that this is a video that will inspire people to leave their own little tips and tricks down in the comments. So I've got a list, everyone loves a list, I've got a list of seven-ish things, so we'll run through them. Number one, it's not going to be plain sailing. You will kill fish, you will have bad days, you will make mistakes. You need to know that everyone is making those mistakes. You're not the only person and you won't be the first or the last to make whatever mistake it is you've just made. So when you're feeling down about, oh, I can't believe I killed that fish because I did something wrong, it happens. You need to use it for the positive. So use that experience of, I left the water running, I turned the heater up too, up too high, I, whatever it was, use that experience to learn from it and make yourself a better fish keeper. Uh, pass on the advice to someone else when they ask you. It's it's tough because we are dealing with uh, real live animals and we want to give them the best care we possibly can and sometimes, despite your best efforts, mistakes will happen, fish will die, whether it's uh, your own fault or not because it's not always going to be your fault. Sometimes a fish will die of old age. They don't live 20, 30 years, all of them. Um, it might be poor husbandry on the part of the fish collector, breeder, shop it was sold from. It might catch a disease, it might get ill. You can only do the best you can do and you can help. You can reach out to um, other communities for help in the fish keeping world and try and fix those things, but ultimately it is going to happen. Don't beat yourself up. Number two is something that I have probably been guilty of more than once. Um, filtration. So filters are a very important part of any aquarium system. I think the rabbit hole that a lot of aquarists get drawn into is going that extra level. So filters, very important. What type of filter, less important. So if you think of a sliding scale of being really, really, really terrible to really, really, really good, um, if having a filter gets you right to the top of this. Having a really good filter takes you an extra 3%. Um, everything you do above having a filter, as long as it can meet the biological load of your aquarium, and most filters can do that, it doesn't matter whether it's a sponge filter, whether it's an internal filter, a canister filter, a sump, whether you're using the newest, fanciest filter media, whether you're turning the volume of your tank over five times, ten times, a hundred times in an hour. All these are the gravy, the juice, the extra on top. These aren't the important part. Just having the filter is kind of 90% of the battle. Uh, everything after that is things that are, we're doing to help ourselves. So if we can have a more efficient filter, we might have to spend fewer hours per year cleaning that filter or do fewer water changes per year. These are all really small gains. These aren't the big things. So you can get drawn down the rabbit hole and you can spend a poop ton of money getting the latest and greatest filters, but you don't need these things. So my advice to my younger self would be chill. You don't need to buy every filter that comes on the market, and neither do you. Number three, I was worried about how to word this, but people will lie to you. People are awful. That's why we keep fish. <laughs> what I mean by that is the internet can be both a wonderful and a harrowing place to seek information. Uh, there are Facebook groups, uh, Discord servers, uh, all, all kinds of things are out there and all kinds of people are out there. And I think it's the people part of it that can be the problem. You can ask the most innocent of questions and get 10 responses from 10 different people that are all polar opposites of each other. People will give you bad advice. It's going to happen. People will jump down your throat for asking for advice. People are just generally horrible. There are some really good communities, and I must say most of the communities, the fish keeping communities that you can find are good. There are just some really toxic people who delight in going on the internet and just causing trouble. I think that's the only way to think of it really. But there are good groups out there. There are local fish clubs which can be an invaluable uh, resource because you can actually sit and talk to people. Um, there are people like me who have their own Discord servers, which I will put a link to in the description. You can join there um, and you can talk to other like-minded people who won't be 
overbearing. They won't shout at you. They won't stuff information down your throat. So they'll help you out. But in general, people will give you bad advice. So don't take all the advice that you get at face value. Do your own little bit of research as well, because that will be really helpful for you. And a lot of it isn't necessarily people being mean or evil or toxic. Most of them are well-intentioned. They just, they're passing on information that's been given to them without necessarily having experienced it. So they might be trying to help, but unless you do your own little bit of research, you might then perpetuate that and continue doing the wrong thing. Because um, a lot of them are well-intentioned and they're just mistakes. Um, but do your own little bit of research, poll different sources for information, talk to people who have experience in the thing that you're trying to figure out rather than just someone repeating something by rote that they heard somewhere else. So this one is a little bit uh, nuanced, shall we say. Again, it kind of relates to the last one about advice that you will seek from people. There are people who will swear blind that whatever advice they give you will work. There are people who will swear blind that's wrong and it won't work for you. What you have to remember are results will vary. It depends on your specific situation. You might have a different pH. You might have harder, softer water. You might have some metal in the water you might have different types of fish different types of tank different types of filtration you might have different water change regimes or maintenance schedules all these things will have slightly different effect on whatever problem it is that you're asking for advice on it's an often missed thing where someone will say my fish has done this what do i do to fix it and someone will just jump straight in and say bump up the temperature or drop the temperature or add this drug or add that it's not as simple as that. So unless people are asking you good questions, and don't be put off by people asking you questions, they're asking you questions so they can give you a more tailored answer. Um, again, picking your sources and researching multiple locations goes a long way. MTA, multiple tank addiction. Um, it's real, it exists. You will want to get more fish tanks. I'm kind of torn here because I really want people to get lots of fish tanks. But the mistake a lot of people make is they'll jump in too quickly and get decide, I need a fish room right now, and they'll go out and buy hundreds of tanks. And two years later, they're overfaced by it and they're selling all those tanks. That's great for someone like me who wants to buy lots of tanks. But take your time, make a plan of what fish you want to keep. Because take it from me, there is no number of fish tanks that you can get to that will make you think, that's enough. No matter how many tanks you get, you will always want one more, or two more, or five more, or ten more. Take your time, plan out what you are intending to keep, what goals you've got, and take your time and enjoy your fish. You've got these beautiful tanks, set them up, enjoy them. Don't just think, there you go, I've done Crebensis, now on to dual cichlids. Enjoy the fish that you want to keep. Don't. It's, it's not like collecting stickers and completing a football album. You've got to spend some time with these aquariums and these fish and enjoy these little ecosystems. So be wary of MTA. Number six, I think, maybe? Patience. This one sucks. Almost every problem I've ever run into needs patience. Things don't move fast in the fish keeping world. If you are setting up a tank from scratch and you intend to do a fishless cycle, it's going to take weeks and weeks and weeks. If you're medicating a fish, it's going to take weeks. If you want to breed fish, it's going to take weeks, months, years. All the Nothing happens quickly. As much as people will offer you solutions to make things happen quickly, often that's a dangerous road to tread. Your likelihood of introducing problems goes through the roof at that point. So patience is a, it's, it's almost a skill. I mean, it sucks. It's, it's horrible because as soon as you buy a fish tank, you want to stuff it full of fish, plants, everything, get it ready and you're up and running. But it's really hard, but you have to do it. You have to take your time. Doing lots of research can help with that, but really there's no there's no substitute for patience so this is my final one this is where i think people like me who are on tinter webs making youtube videos we often think this but before i tell you about that i would like to draw your attention to there'll be a few buttons down here where you can click like that's always useful and very very helpful and the subscribe button if you like this kind of thing if you're into fishy content i make all kinds of videos about fish and aquariums and fresh water click the buttons share the videos, all those good things, that'd be really helpful. You can join the channel if you want to, and there's also going to be a link to my Discord server, so we've got a really good community of like-minded people. Any problems, 
you can ask your questions without any worries about getting jumped on and you can just kind of hang out on the discord server It'd be good to see you over there but most importantly click that subscribe button okay add over the final one it's internet experts people like me aren't the experts in fish keeping um, people like me often present it as they have completed fish keeping i have completed the course i hold this certificate in fish keeping you don't complete fish keeping it's a journey it's an experience you're always learning it doesn't matter if you've been doing this for five years or 50 years you have not learned everything there are people who are really really clued up on very specific areas of the hobby there are people who are really really clued up on the science behind the areas of the hobby there are people who are clued up on individual species even those, and you can tell you can tell when one of them is telling the truth because none of them will call themselves an expert. They'll say they're very experienced, but they're all willing to learn more. And that's the key to this. This isn't something, you, you don't finish it. It's not a jigsaw. You don't get all the pieces together and there you go, stand back and admire my work. It's an ongoing thing. It evolves, it moves, it keeps going. Go into it with that mindset and you'll do a lot better. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. It was just a bit of a frivolous video shall we say if you've got any tips please get them in the comments let us know what kind of thing you wish you could tell your younger self and it might help some people who are starting out in this hobby have a better experience and that's what we all want and like i say i'll see you in the discord server bye, bye.